是三零一八叶真怡，今天要为各位介绍的是可汗学院。可汗学院的创立理念是 ：for free, for everyone, for ever。可汗学院创办人萨尔曼·可汗曾说过：“成功由自己来定义，故唯一的失败就是放弃学习。”接下来，让我们来看关于可汗学院的介绍影片。You only have to know one thing. You can learn anything. Nobody's born smart. We all start at zero. Can't talk. Can't walk. Certainly can't do algebra. Adding, reading, writing, riding a bike. Nobody's good at anything at first. There was a time when Einstein couldn't count to ten, and Shakespeare had to learn his ABCs just like the rest of us. Thankfully, we're born to learn. Slowly, surely, you stumble, slip, crawl, fall, and fail and fall. Frustrating, confusing, trying, struggling, until one day you walk. One foot in front of the other, one idea on top of the next. Each wrong answer making your brain a little bit stronger. Failing is just another word for growing. When you keep going, this is learning. Knowing that you'll get it, even if you haven't gotten it yet. Because the most beautiful, complex concepts in the whole universe are built on basic ideas that anyone, anywhere, can understand. Whoever you are, wherever you are. You only have to know one thing. You can learn anything. Kahan School, diverse learning. In this global digital era, I hope everyone has experienced the days of running around like a crazy person. We are eager to learn more and more skills, but in reality, it wasted our time, and it even cost our families a large amount of money. 小的支出，可是可汗学院的出现帮助了我们。它不仅提供从小学到大学程度的数学、英文，也提供了人文社会科学、自然以及电脑编码等课程。它的它平均每一部影片只有十分钟，因此我们可以自由自在的学习并分配我们的时间。可汗学院创办人萨尔曼·可汗希望创造一个不怕丢脸的学习世界。萨尔曼·可汗原本在华尔街担任金融分析师。有一天，他得知在远方的表妹数学成绩不好并不好，因此他便利用网络开始辅导，做远端教学。他发现自己其实对教育充满了热忱，虽然身为一个门外汉。他人一同栽进教育的世界，他希望帮助每个人都能不受学校制度所局限，学习任何自己所想要学习的事情。萨尔曼·可汗对教育改革的理想是：学校应该留空白时间让孩子探索。想必我们都经历过教育改革的折磨吧？它不仅没让学校学习变得更美好。更使得学生更痛苦，家长更辛苦。因此，他认为学校应该多利用图书馆的资源，让孩子自由探索，或者是利用网络开放课程，例如可汗学院，让大家做学习，真正的让每个人都能发挥他自己的潜能。想必你现在一定有很多问题吧？接下来就让我一步一步教你如何开始使用可汗学院。你现在看到的是可汗学院的首页，在这里它有做一些基本的介绍，你可以大致的浏览一下。接着要开始登录时。请按 Start Learning Now。学生的话，请点这儿。你如果是老师的话，请点 Teacher Start Here。家长的话，请点 Parents Start Here。
点进去后，它提供了 Facebook、Gmail， 还有其他 email 账号登录的方式。点进去后看到的就是你的主页，在这边会记录你所有点选过的课程，还有学习进度。这边，在整个主页的左上角有个 subject， 点进去就会看到所有可汗学院提供的课程。在这边有分类，有 math 数学、science 科学、economy and finance 就是经济、art and humanities 就是人文艺术。Computing 是电脑编码 ，Test Prep 是指 SAT 等美国的考试 ，Partner Content 则是指可汗学院与其他合作的项目，例如有跟美国大都会博物馆、现代艺术博物馆，还有其跟其他伙伴合作所制作的内容。大家有兴趣都可以点选看看。唱蚂蚁上的基本介绍，接下来就让我们实际的操作看看。在这边，让我为大家举一个实际的例子。当你在 Subject 里面选择任何一个项目，例如现在我举，我选择的是 Partner Content 里面的 Crash Course， 里面有个项目叫 w o r k History。这边的画面的左侧，你看到的是关于这个课程的简单的基本介绍，右边。则是每一堂课的大标题及以下的分支课程。圈圈变成实心的话，表示你已经读过了。当然，你如果要重读一遍，也是可以在按下去做点选。在这边，我选择这个还是抠心的课程。现在，就让我们来观看它的教学影片吧。在观看前，记得要把字幕打开哦。Hi, I'm John Green. This is Crash Course World History, and today we're going to talk about China, which these days is discussed almost constantly on television and in newspapers. Wait, are they still a thing? So we used to print information on thinly sliced trees, and then you would pay someone to take these thinly sliced trees and throw them onto your front lawn, and that's how we received information. No one thought this was weird, by the way. <laughs> Right, but anyway, you hear a lot about how China is going to overtake the U.S. and bury us under a pile of inexpensive electronics. But I don't want to address those fears today. Instead, I want to talk about how the way you tell a story shapes the story. China was really the first modern state, by which I mean it had a centralized government and a core of bureaucrats who could execute the wishes of that government, and it lasted in pretty much the same form from 150 B.C.E. until 1911 C.E., which is technically known as a long ass time. The Chinese were also among the first people to write history. In fact, one of the Confucian classics is called the Shu Jing, or Classic of History. This is great for us because we can now see the things the Chinese recorded as they were happening. But it's also problematic because of the way the story is told. So even me from the past, with this five minutes of world history, knows that Chinese history is conveniently divided into periods called dynasties. Mr. Green, I didn't even say anything. That doesn't seem. Very fair. What makes a dynasty a dynasty is that it's ruled by a king, or as the Chinese know him, an emperor who comes from a continuous ruling family. As long as that family produces emperors, and they are always dudes, no, they aren't. First off, there were several empress dowagers who wielded tremendous power throughout Chinese history, and there was one very important full. Fledged Empress Empress Wu, who ruled China for more than 20 years and founded her own freaking dynasty. And those emperors keep ruling. The dynasty gets to be a dynasty. So the dynasty can end for two reasons: either they run out of dudes, which never happened thanks to the hard work of many, many concubines, or the emperor is overthrown after a rebellion or a war. This is more or less what happened to all the dynasties, which makes it easy for me to go over to Camera Two and describe them in a single run-on sentence. Hi there, Camera Two. Leaving aside the Xia Dynasty, which was sadly fictional, the first Chinese dynasty was the Shang, who were overthrown by the Zhao, which disintegrated into political chaos called the Warring States period, in which states warred over periods. Oh no, wait, it was a period in which states warred, which ended when the Qin Emperor was able to extend his power over most of the heretofore warring states. But the Qin were replaced by the Han, which was the dynasty that really set the pattern for most of China's history and lasted for almost 400 years. After which China fell again into political chaos, which only means there was no dynasty that ruled over all of China. And out of this chaos rose the Sui, who were followed quickly by the Tang, who in turn were replaced after a short period of no dynasty by the Song, who saw a huge growth in China's commerce that was still not enough to prevent them from being conquered by the Wan, who were both unpopular and unusual. 
because they were Mongols. Which sparked rebellions resulting in the rise of the Ming, which was the dynasty that built the Great Wall and made amazing vases, but didn't save them from falling to the Manchus, who founded a dynasty that was called the Qing, which was the last dynasty because in 1911 there was a rebellion like the ones in, say, America, France, or Russia, and the whole dynastic system, which at that point had lasted for a long-ass time, came to an end. And breathe. So that's what happened. But what's interesting as far as capital H history is concerned is why it happened, and especially why the people who were writing history at the time said it happened, which leads us to the mandate of heaven. 影片部分我们就播到这里可汉学院还有许多工能等着大家来发现如果有问题的话也可以翻阅我的书面资料那我们今天电脑操作的部分就到这里结束喽这是一个由台湾人自己制作的网络开放课程书籍部分我则推荐大家可以去图书馆借阅可汉学院的教育奇迹这本书它里面讲述萨尔曼可汉如何创立可汉学院及他的教育理念最后在这里我还是要首申我